Hey everyone, this is Andrew Ty. Welcome to my YouTube channel. So if you've gamed on a Mac before, then you shouldn't be wrong in assuming that games designed specifically for the macOS operating system should perform the best, especially when compared to running the Windows version of the same game through translation or emulation. However, this isn't always the case. And today what I'm gonna do is to show you five examples where the Windows version of the game will actually run better than the specifically designed Mac version. So if you haven't subscribed already, then please consider subscribing and you'll be able to keep up to date with the latest Mac gaming news. So one of the most glaring examples of the performance difference is Crusader Kings 3, the Paradox strategy game. On the left, we have the official Mac port and on the right, we have the Windows version running through Crossover 22. And one of the reasons why the game runs so slowly on macOS is because it relies on the OpenGL graphics API. And this is gonna be a pretty common theme for many of the games on this list. OpenGL had already been deprecated on macOS at the time of Crusader Kings 3 Mac port release. And the reason that the Crossover version runs so much faster is all thanks to more recent work done on the DXVK to Molten VK translation layer, which allows DirectX 11 titles to access better GPU performance through Metal on Apple Silicon hardware. So next up is the strategy game XCOM 2. And unfortunately we have a similar story. So this port was developed by Feral Interactive and in their wisdom, they decided to use the OpenGL graphics API instead of using Apple's proprietary Metal graphics API. And unfortunately you can see how slow OpenGL is even running on one of the most powerful Apple Silicon N1 Max chips. And when we run the same Windows game through Crossover 22, we're getting about two to three times better performance. And again, this is all thanks to DXVK and Molten VK making use of Metal. And the real shame here is that XCOM 2 already has a Metal port on iOS. So if you play XCOM 2 on iPhone or iPad, you're already making use of the optimized Metal Graphics API. However, for whatever reason, Feral have not brought these same improvements and optimizations to the macOS port. And unfortunately, sideloading the iOS app on Apple Silicon Macs is not currently working. So therefore, the best way to play this game is gonna be through crossover. So next up is the open world game Sleeping Dogs. And once again, this is another feral interactive port which uses OpenGL, I'm afraid. With the in-game benchmark, it's showing that the crossover version has slightly over twice the average frame rate of the official Mac port. And also the minimum FPS is also a lot higher, which means that it's gonna run generally much smoother. So what this has really shown us is that it's worth checking out whether a Windows version of a game can run through crossover, especially because older Mac ports are often stuck in time. They don't get the kind of long-term support, whereas crossover is constantly iterating and new and newer versions of things like Molten VK and DXVK get released, and the performance is definitely gonna improve over time. If you'd like to find out how to use crossover, then please make sure to click the link at the top of the description for my Windows gaming on Mac tutorial. You can also get a 25% discount from crossover if you use the coupon code Apple Gaming Wiki. Every time you make a purchase, you'll be helping to support the channel and the content that I create. So next up is Final Fantasy XIV, the massively multiplayer online RPG. So what's interesting about this port is that the official Mac version is actually using a crossover bottle. So if you actually look inside the folder structure of the Mac port, you're gonna find a familiar bottles interface and you can even go ahead and edit the crossover bottle.configuration file and do things like add the DirectX HUD, which shows detailed frame rate information. So despite the fact that Final Fantasy XIV's Mac port does use crossover technology, there is actually a faster way to run this game. So that's using a project called 14 on Mac. And this is basically a community-based open source wine wrapper specifically designed for Final Fantasy XIV on Mac. And it contains optimizations that aren't in the official Mac port. So in the populated main cities, we were seeing frame rate increases of around five to eight FPS. And in open world combat areas, we were seeing a frame rate increase of around 20 FPS. It's definitely worth installing this community version at 14 on Mac. Despite them being based on the same type of translation technology, the 14 on Mac launcher is gonna contain the very latest updates to DXVK and Molten VK, which is gonna offer the best performance in the long run. And the launcher also offers support for things like shaders and plugins as well. So the last game on the list is Rocket League. Now many of you know that Rocket League has a macOS port on Steam. However, when the game moved over to the Epic Game Store, what they decided to do was to stop updating this Mac port and therefore you can only play single player or with bots. One of the reasons that Cyanix did this is because they stated that only 0.3% of the player base used either macOS or Linux. And therefore they couldn't justify keeping this software up to date for these platforms. So they dropped support entirely. 
However, thankfully, there are still ways to play the Windows version of Rocket League on macOS. One method is going to be using Crossover and also the Heroic Launcher in order to get the Epic Games version of the game working so you can play cross-platform multiplayer with the rest of the world. So playing through Crossover has its advantages and disadvantages. If we have the XVK enabled, then this is going to perform pretty well. However, one bug that remains is the fact that we can't see name tags. If we use Crossover 22 with YD3D instead, then we don't have this name tag bug. However, the game will perform slower with worse performance. Probably the best way to play this game online is going to be through the virtual machine software called Parallels, where we can run Windows 11 ARM and play the game with the rest of the world. And the performance is pretty impressive considering that we're running this through a virtual machine and the game code is being emulated onto the ARM system architecture. If you want to find out how to do this, then make sure to follow the link in the description for my Windows Parallels install tutorial. So anyway, that was my list of better performing Windows games on Apple Silicon hardware. If you think I left anything out, then please make sure to leave a comment. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did, please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.